Hey, welcome back. It's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So today I wanted to show you how to take a subcontractor's daily report. So here is a <clears throat> steel subcontractor and uh, this shows the days that they were on site, uh, the location that they were in, and the total man hours per day that that subcontractor was on site. I want to take that import that information into P6 and I want to create a stacked histogram in P6 to show uh, that subcontractor compared to when the when other subcontractors were on site. So in this case I want to show steel and concrete over the life of the project. Um, so that is what the end result is going to look like and again we're starting with this um, this Excel file from there with, with the daily report information. But before we get started, all I ask in return for making these videos is that you check out our P6 and Microsoft Project Comparison tools at our website, which is pjmss.com. Uh, we believe that this is the best comparison report on the market. It's the only Microsoft Project Comparison tool that exists. So if you want to learn more, go check out the page at pjmss.com and click on tools. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So if you've seen some of my other videos, um, what I like to do is when I'm dealing with a lot of information, especially something like this, it, that's in an, an Excel table, um, you can see I have a lot of rows that I'm going to be importing into my P6 file. So rather than going the traditional route and entering in all of those things manually, what I like to do is import them in um, because it's going to be a lot quicker and I think more accurate because uh, less, less prone to human error. So um, the first thing that I need to do is create a template file from, um, from P6 and with the relevant information that I need to do the, the import. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I, I have this test file and that's what I'm going to be bringing in all this information into. I'm going to create a WBS and I'm going to do one for steel and then I want to do another one for the concrete subcontractor. All right, so we got those two going here. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is since we're focusing on steel, I'm going to create an activity and just put it under the steel um, WBS right there. And I'm just going to call this export activity. And that's really just so that I have the right information when I'm running my import. Um, so one thing that I'm going to be doing with this Excel file is I want to add one activity per day. I want it to be a one day activity. And I'm going to assign, uh, you know, in this case, it's going to be a, a, a one activity on 324 that has 12 man hours assigned to it. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to constraint, I'm going to use the uh, a primary constraint on each one of these activities to hold it in place on the specific date. So I'm going to use a start on or after constraint with this specific date. Um, and yeah, I'm going to create an activity for each one of these rows. So what I want to do in P6 is I want to add that constraint to my example activity, start on or after. I'm going to make it a one day duration and that way I'll be able to use it for my export. So let's go ahead and let's export, let's create our export template here. Um, so I'm going to go file, export, spreadsheet, and let's go ahead and go next, activities, next. And we're going to do, uh, I have this man hour template here that I created. Um, so, but the, the relevant information you need to make sure you have is activity ID. WBS code, activity name, original duration, primary constraint, and uh, the primary constraint date. So make sure you have those. Let's go ahead and export that file. All right, so that was successful. So let's go ahead and grab that file right now, uh, which is, I gotta, now I gotta go find it. So one second as I find this file. All right, so I open that file and here it is. Um, so the only information that I need is activity ID, which is here my WBS code, my name, my duration, and then those constraints. So I'm just expanding those so you can see them a little bit better. I don't need the activity status, that's not relevant to us, so let's go ahead and just delete that. And let's focus on this first structural steel daily report. So I need to get this information in the same format 
and copied over to this template in order to bring it in. So I need to create an activity ID. I need to make sure that my WBS code is assigned correctly. Uh, the, the name, uh, maybe I can create a name. The duration, I'm gonna have everything be a one day duration. I'm gonna use the start on or after constraint for all of these activities. And then I'm gonna assign whatever day that that individual activity occurred on, I'm gonna assign that as a primary constraint so to hold that activity in place. So let's go ahead, let's create our activity. Um, actually, we have an item number here, so let's go ahead and just retain that as our item number. Um, maybe what I can do is create a, um, an activity description that's a little bit better than what's here. So maybe I can just use my concatenate function, which combines two or two or more text strings and I'll just call this uh, steel subcontractor space dash space and I'm gonna combine that with the location since I have that here on the spreadsheet and maybe that'll come in handy later on of just seeing where they worked so then I'm gonna basically fill down that formula all the way down so now I have my activity ID let's go ahead and let's copy all of those over to the bottom that I don't need the total subtotal row but let's copy my IDs over here all right and then my uh, WBS code since this is the steel subcontractor let's just go ahead and make sure that I have the right code which is that test dot one is for the steel so I just want to make sure when I import it that it comes into the right WBS location so let's copy those down that's copied down then let's go ahead and we'll grab our description that we just created that with that concatenate function. Let's go ahead and paste that over here. Um, we have our one day duration. Let's copy that down. Our start on our finish. Let's copy that down. And then the last thing that I need to do is just to make sure that I have all of my dates for the steel subcontractor. And I'm gonna bring that over and put it under the primary constraint date paste the formula and you'll notice that um, it's in the wrong format what you can do is um, since the the correct formula is up, or the correct formats up here let's just go ahead and convert that into a date and i'm using my format painter and i'm just going to um, highlight all of these activities here and that'll change my formatting to the correct formatting Let's go ahead and delete that top row because we don't need that. We were, we were just using it as a placeholder to identify what we need to bring in. Let's save that file now that we have all of the information. A couple things about this Excel file. Just make sure that you don't have any formulas in there. Make sure you don't have any erroneous tabs down here. Make sure it's just the task and the user data. You don't need anything else um, or else you're going to have an error when you go ahead and try and import this file. So let's go ahead and close that. Go back to our Excel sheet, or our P6 page, excuse me. And then I'm gonna import this file in. So I'm gonna go File, Import. It's gonna be an Excel file. And I can choose where that file was. So I think I had that under Resource Import. And this one is the file. Activities, Update Existing Project. I'm gonna import that to this specific file and I'm going to finish that import okay so that went ahead and imported successfully you'll notice everything's on the data date line um, but everything is constrained those constraints did come in so let's just go ahead and reschedule um, you know recalculate the file here and then that way all of my activities fall on the date that they're constrained to because um, that's going to help uh, the distribution of the resources be accurate. I'm just going to delete this activity here to clean clean the file up. Okay, next thing I need to do is I need to bring in the actual man hours associated with each activity. So the first thing I need to do is create uh, a resource, individual resources for um, steel and for concrete because those are the, the labor hours that we're analyzing or the subcontractors. So let's create one. We'll call this my steel man hours. Let's make sure that it's a labor resource. 
um, I'm gonna, the resource ID, I'm gonna call this one steel. And then um, you can uncheck calculate cost from units. We don't need that. So just make sure it's a labor resource. Um, and then I'm also gonna create the, the right resource for the concrete as well. So let's outdent that. Since I already have a concrete as a uh, material resource, I'm just gonna call this CONC for concrete. And we'll call this concrete man hours. All right, so we have our two subcontractors that we're gonna assign hours to. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is assign um, that resource, the steel resource, to all of these activities here. So I'm just gonna highlight everything, assign a resource, and I'm gonna use the steel resource and assign that to all of my activities. And so once that's been assigned, I can go ahead and close that. And now I just need to import those resources um, into this schedule file. So now I need to create a resource uh, template uh, in Excel. So let's go ahead and make that resource template. So let's go File, Export, and I'm gonna go Excel. Resource assignments is what we wanna do now. Let's go Next, Next, and I have this labor resource uh, template that I'm using. So that this is the only information that we actually need from um, from this file. I'll put that back up here. But uh, really, the only information we need is the activity ID, the resource ID, and the budgeted units. So just make sure that those are on there. Let's go ahead and export that out of here. And we'll open up that file. Resource assignments. All right, give it just one second to open here. All right, so we have um, all of the resource assignments, but what we can do is uh, just delete all of them except for the top row. And I just leave the top row again so that I have a, a template to, to model to bring over the other information. So I really just need the activity ID, the steel resource, and then the budgeted units. So let's go back to our daily report. And I'm gonna go over to our item number which is our activity ID at this point. I'm gonna copy that, bring that over, paste it as a value. Um, I actually don't need column B, which is the activity status, so I'll get rid of that. And the role ID and the cost account, I'm gonna get rid of those because I actually don't need that as well. Um, I want my steel resource to be copied down for everything because uh, that's the resource that we're assigning to all of these activities. And now I just need my budgeted labor units. So let's go ahead over here. And on my daily report, I have the total hours over here. And I'm just gonna copy those, all of those, and just paste them into my template here. And just make sure that, that the labor hours per day matches which activity that you're wanting to assign it to. Um, I'm gonna delete this top row here. I'm gonna save everything. And now this file is ready to be imported. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. And we're gonna file, import, Excel. And let's go ahead and search for that, that file here. Resource assignments, update existing project. And let's go ahead and import that. And we'll wait till that's done. All right, so now it is successful. We have our, our labor units have been imported in. And now what I wanna see is uh, that information on the histogram. So let's go ahead and go to our resource usage profile. And we're gonna right click on the graph down here and we wanna use the stacked histogram feature. And if you're not seeing anything there, that's just fine. Go ahead and right click again and go to our resource usage profile options. And what I need to do is create a filter for the information that I want to include. So in this case, we'll say steel labor hours. And I wanna say where my resource ID is equal to my steel subcontractor. I'm gonna just click okay. And then you can choose a pattern if you want. Uh, I just like using the solid pattern and maybe if you wanna change the color, I'm gonna do that nice electric blue here. 
and we'll apply that and then I'll kind of shrink this down and now you can see here is uh, the resource curve for my my steel subcontractor so I want to do the exact same oh, I just realized that my face is uh, is blocking this resource profile but here you go better look at the resource profile and uh, so what I want to do is the exact same process but with my concrete subcontractors so um, I'm not going to record that portion of it, but I'll go ahead and import the concrete information and then I'll show you how to stack those histograms together. All right, so I have all of the concrete information imported into the schedule. So the next thing that I need to do is just stack those histograms on top of each other. So go ahead and right click on the um, resource profile over here. We're going to click resource usage profile options. We're going to add a new filter for our concrete uh, labor hours. And we're going to say where our resource ID is equal to our concrete. And let's go ahead and make that a solid, solid bar. And we'll use that nice orange here. So let's go ahead and apply that. And now we can see uh, the concrete subcontractor. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, show a print of that. Um, and if you can't see this, just go to your page setup up here and options and just make sure your profile is checked and everything else is unchecked. And that'll show you the uh, resource usage profile here. And so, yeah, it's just a nice layout. You can see the concrete labor, uh, the total number of man hours per month. Um, and then on top of that, we see the steel man hours per month. Um, and you can, you know, tell, draw your own conclusions and do your own analysis. But that is how you bring in the um, the daily report information into the into the P6 schedule. So if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below. Love to hear more from you. Okay, take care.